Hey, what's up everyone? Hope you're all having a wonderful time. Today we're going to go over a very promising build for the new upcoming class Warlock that will be available to play in 1.0. The build is focusing on stacking necrotic resist to scale both damage and providing tons of ward as a primary defense. And the build will also scale dodge which is not something uh, we usually see as the acolyte. It looks uh, very promising and will probably be quite fast as well and overall a nice monolith farmer. Do keep in mind that there might be still changes as we don't have any patch notes yet and also with the 1.0 release we are going to get some new uniques that might be viable to the setup as well. The Curse made a very detailed video about basically the same setup as I were planning on going for so check out this video and make sure to give him a sub and like, link will be in the description. I just went with some small adjustments here uh, that I think would work better for me. And with the Warlock we get access to some new skills and one that I think stood out the most is the Chthonic Fissure. And the skill opens up a fissure in the ground dealing damage over time and also releasing spirits that will seek out enemies from the fissure. And these spirits inflict a curse called Torment that will deal necrotic damage over time and more specifically it's a 120 necrotic damage over 3 seconds and added damage will apply at 200% of its value and the torment will not stack. And even with this I do believe it will still be really good. In the skill tree of Catonic Fissure we have some really nice passives like Twisted Wave where we deal up to 3% more damage to the torment per 2% uncapped necrotic resist. And with a bit of mid maxing we can get around 1200 necrotic resist which will be around 1.8k multiplicative damage to the torment curse which is just insane when you are thinking about it. We can also use the Bone Claimer Barbute which will provide us flat ward per second per 3% uncapped necrotic resist and this will be around 400 ward per second in this current setup. We're also using a new passive called Imperceptible, which is in the Warlock tree which gives us Ward Decay Threshold per 1% Necrotic Resist. And you can think of this as instead of starting the Ward Decay from zero as you normally would and this will now instead start at 1200 as we have that much Necrotic Resist on us. There are some real cool synergies here and the Acolyte overall have a lot of passives that will improve ward even more and also giving us a lot of intelligence which also increases damage to our skills and give us ward retention. We're also going to be playing around with Damned which is a necrotic damage over time element. And this makes so when we have a combined 20 stacks or more of Damned uh, you chain all the Damned enemies to the ground for 2 seconds and gain Damned Overload. And then when we get Overload we now also get a thing called Witchfire and Witchfire is going to be a combined damage source of fire and necrotic damage and I believe it was something like 300 damage of both damage types over 12 seconds. And this we can also improve even more by getting more chance to damned or ignite. So let's take a look on the setup that we have here. Uh, so the helm we already went over, here we get tons of necrotic resist and also the flat ward per second here. And then we have Telf Und's Mirage and this item have not been played around with that much but now with the Warlock I'm guessing that this is going to be a must have for a lot of builds. And the reason for this is the new Ghost Flame skill which can be obtained for any Acolyte build. Ghost Flame is a channel skill that will shoot out jets of horrid flames in front of you dealing fire and necrotic damage over time. And you can use this skill as a mobility skill while you are channeling. And we also have the node Wraith Form which provides dodge rating per intelligence as well as more dodge rating while channeling. And it's not a small amount that we get here either. Most builds get like 100 intelligence really easy and that's 4k dodge and uh, this can also be uh, transferred to armor if you would like so. But back to the boots, as you can see here this will be a great synergy with the skill as we get tons of bonuses while we are channeling, we get movement speed, mana on dodge, ward on dodge and just flat and increase the dodge when we are channeling. 
Wartail is one of my favorite builds as I have some great memories back in the day where these spells were really really strong uh, before they changed it to this. It's uh, not crazy about this but I feel like it would be a nice addition to the build as we're using dodge rating as well as it provides some extra movement speed. A normal belt would work great here as well. And maybe even going for a Immolator's Oblation to boost the base damage of Torment. And then we're also using a Twisted Heart and also a Burning Everite. And this might be even more overkill but uh, works as a great source of gaining Fast Ward. And we get a percent of health as Ward when we use a Necrotic Spell. And then we also heal from the Burning Everite here. We get 3% of necrotic damage least as health, which will also work for the Torment Curse, as it is a damage over time, which is also really nice. However, the build is uh, not about dealing damage fast, so this might be a waste of space. Uh, the idea I had was mainly to use this for bosses, as we can mainly use the skill Rip Blood to proc this faster. I'm guessing that we are going to have quite a lot of ward without this though, but we have to wait and see until we get to play on 1.0. And I just want to mention the idols as well here. As you can see, we can get uh, necrotic resist here on every piece of the idols, which uh, makes us able to get our necrotic resist up quite fast without all the gear and uniques. And uh, you can get up to almost 200% resist from the idols alone here. And let's go over the skills real quick here. We got uh, Chthonic Fissure as we mentioned before. Opens up a Inferno Fissure in the ground dealing fire damage over time to enemies on top of it. And as well as releasing spirits from the fissure to seek out nearby enemies and these spirits inflict enemies with torment. A curse that slows and deals necrotic damage over time. We already went over Twisted Wave which will deal more damage per necrotic res. We also have Grim Tide and this will give additional damage multiplier to necrotic damage for each critical strike multiplier that we have on us. Severed Ward will make the spirits hit shred enemy necrotic resistance. Tomb Gorger makes so torment deal just more damage. Of Gloom and Flames makes so we now can have two fissures instead of one. And then we also have Chthonic Rapture, which will give us a chance to replace the spirit with a Chaos Bolt instead. Then we have Chaos Bolt, a barrage of Chthonic projectiles which lands in an area around the target. First we have Excited Liberation and this makes Chaos Bolt's hit have a chance per intelligence to cause rip blood for us. We get 1% to cost per intelligence and with any Acolyte it's uh, quite easy to get 100 intelligence. Another affliction also makes it so Chaos Bolt's hit also cursed the enemy with Bone Curse. We're using Seed of Chaos and this makes it so the Chaos Bolt now also have a small chance to be recasted. Condemned to Chaos makes so the Chaos Bolt's hit now also inflict damned. And Scatter makes so Chaos Bolt now have a chance to fear enemies and the projectile targets a bigger area. Now we're using Ghost Flame, a channeling skill that will release a jet of horrid flames in front of you, dealing fire damage and necrotic damage over time. As mentioned before, we have Wraith Form here, which will give us a dodge rating per intelligence while channeling, and also a more dodge rating while channeling. Spectral Menace makes it so Ghost Flame has a lower channel cost, and we also gain a portion of our mana as ward each second while we're channeling. And then Spirit of Dread, so we get some extra movement speed when we are using the scale. And also Doom Surge for even more movement speed. And Feeble Prey makes so we leech a portion of the damage that we dealt as health against cursed enemies. And also we also take less damage from cursed enemies while we are channeling. Dread Furnace, so we get some extra damn chance per second here. And also the Ignite. And also Occult Emberns makes so Gone Flame has increased Ignite and damn duration per point of intelligence. Now we're using Rip Blood and this is mainly going to be propped by Chaos Bolt. But I think we are going to use this uh, ourselves on boss fights. And not only for the ward from the Twisting Heart, but uh, also from this node, Arcane Absuration. And this makes it so when you directly cast Rip Blood and hit at least one enemy, you gain additional spell damage for 6 seconds and this effect can also stack. So 
this cannot be procced from the Chaos Bolt and uh, as I said must be directly casted to gain its effect and uh, combine this to boost the damage for the Torment for example and every other skill and at the same time just providing the whole ward loop from Twisting Heart there. I think this will be really nice so we can just basically face tank bosses. Rip Spirit make it so the Rip Blood is now a necrotic instead of physical. And Arcane Fortress make it so the Blood Orbs from Rip Blood now instead give us ward instead of health. Hematology gives us health restored per intelligence. This is now changed to ward instead. And also Mana Feast which makes the Blood Orbs now also grant us mana when we directly cast Rip Blood. And then we have Bone Curse and this is also going to be triggering from the Chaos Bolt and uh, this will help us with some single target for bosses. Seal of Mortality makes the Bone Curse apply Mark of Death for a short duration and this will make the enemies take increased damage. Misery makes the physical tag from the skill now goes to Necrotic instead. One point in Marrow Thief, great uh, way just to get some uh, bone armor chance here uh, on kill. Iron Maiden, yes, the Bone Curse deal more damage. And then Brittle Bone for the kill threshold at 12%. And here are the passive skill tree. I just go over them here real quick. And uh, you can pause the video if you like to, or go to Lost Epoch Tool and check them out more for yourself. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you found this video helpful. If you got any other questions, feel free to drop a comment and I'll try to ask them as soon as I can. Also, I'd like to hear what you are planning on playing on the 1.0 release. And with that said, I'll see you in the next one. Bye!